हेलो हेलो गुड इवनिंग हेलो हेलो हाय टू एवरीवन आत्मा नमस्ते नमस्ते let me get this on to go live we we, we, we were missing you both oh, <laughs> missing us both. over the weekend yeah. what do you do when the sessions are over we have i think maybe one month to that and then no more no more right. study yes uh, weekend was fabulous how it is to see you uh, every alternate day <laughs> true i know all right so let's start off with our um, invocation let's get our eyes connect them to the power inhale and exhale inhale fresh prana exhale all the used up prana especially for those of you who've been working at home or at the office let's just inhale exhale release all the stress all the connections with all the work people inhale exhale all the stress irritation of any any other emotion you do not want to have right now inhale and exhale be aware of why we all gathered here today and let's invoke to the supreme being the divine father the divine mother to our beloved and respected teacher grand master chua kaksu to lord maha guru ji mele to all the great ones especially the great teachers and beings and masters of theosophy the great teachers and beings of knowledge light and wisdom we humbly ask for great great blessings to bless us all with greater clarity of mind with a deeper understanding of these priceless teachings we ask you to continue help us to get it back to our foundation in pranic healing in our hatha yoga so we may become better instruments and channels to do your work let thy will be done not the urges of our lower nature we humbly offer ourselves as instruments to your work with thanks and in full faith so be it. with gratitude respect and love we thank you inhale exhale the energy spread it through your entire being inhale the energy exhale share it with your family thank you for allowing me to be here as well inhale and exhale share it with everyone in this group thank you for all being here to enhance our knowledge and wisdom inhale exhale share it with the whole world thank you slowly open your eyes with a smile Atma Namaste again, everybody. Thank you for coming back. <laughs> and uh, the chapter here, we continue with uh, what where we stopped last time. Yes, I'm just going to move my water here. So let's continue with the web. And at this point, we're going to talk about what actually affects uh, the web, right? And uh, this is something that we're going to start looking at today. So if you have your books, uh, please open it. to the respective page all right so we're going to talk about um for me it's the third paragraph on that page certain drugs yes with reference to alcohol uh, narcotics uh, tobacco so what we in in both um, master chers achieving oneness with a high soul course and with uh, arhatik yoga we talk about certain things that we should refrain from page number i'm sorry i amit can you help with the page number 68 no wait 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 i'm on birth 65 <laughs> i don't think you could be at 65 birth. of the uh, older yeah 60 70 okay between 65 and 70 somewhere there <laughs> so you you know how old the <laughs> student <Book> is <laughs> okay So moving on uh, so we're talking about these addi- addictive drugs um and uh material that can actually affect uh, the web right and so we're talking about alcohol narcotic drugs uh we're talking about tobacco um and they say that it contains a certain matter they haven't really specified in this book at this point at least what this matter is so but they say it contains a certain matter 
that literally breaks up. You know, it becomes so volatile that um, uh, some of it passes from the physical into the astral, which means if you remember that uh, web which we had between the astral and the uh, etheric and physical body, this allowed only things from the astral to move through, but not the other way around. But with these, uh, these kind of um, material that we consume, it does affect the other flow, which is not conducive for us. And so what happens is they say that it allows them for uh, it allows for passing of things from the physical into the astral state, and so they say students from dietetics. Uh, huh? <laughs> dietetics. Okay. Yeah. So students who basically deal with diet, right? And they say if you are especially involved with understanding toxins, they say this is very important for you to understand. It's interesting to realize that this similar matter that we're talking about is also contained but in very, very small proportion in coffee and tea as well. Yes. And so they continue to say that if the person continue, continues for a long, long time, uh, it has, it can, right? The effect can manifest on their webs as well. Their and so it says when this takes place, these constitute rush out through the chakram in the direction opposite to to that of which they are intended. Again, remember we are talking about only astral coming into the physical, but not from physical to the astral. So even with this, it can happen. And so that's when we talk about people who are addicted to coffee and tea, right? And so we're talking about this addictive quality, that matter that's connected to it, that actually starts causing a problem to the physical web, yes? And so it says there are two ways in which um, this deterioration, yes, or destruction may be brought about. One is the type of person. So the type of person is one, and the second is the proportion of the constituents of their etheric and astral bodies. Yes, and so the first type, they say, uh, the rush of volatile, volatilizing matter actually burns away the web. So the with, with whatever matter they have, that matter that they're talking about, it literally burns the entire This getting... What? Nothing. No, I that's think. your... No, you haven't done it, so I'm just oh. All right, sorry, I just had to take care of that. Uh, so moving on, so they say that there are these two types. One is the person itself and the other is the type of quality of their etheric and uh, astral bodies. Now, for me, when I look at this and I look at Master Chua's teachings, there, there is, uh, you know, he doesn't really uh, distinguish it this way. He actually puts all of it together. But nevertheless, since they've done that, uh, we'll go into it in a bit. Do you want to talk first? Or oh, yeah, okay, okay. okay. So let Amit continue and then I'll add in between what I think of. So uh, certain drugs, notably alcohol, all that stuff, like, like, like Sumi mentioned, they haven't uh, mentioned yet what kind of matter we're talking about, right? Um, now, students of dietetics, now tea and coffee, you know, I'm not sure what type of tea or coffee they drank in 1925, but based on my understanding, they don't cause... Uh, you know, holes and cracks. So don't worry. You can have uh, your uh, masala tea or your Suleimani or whatever you like. Um, what? Moroccan you, tea? No, you can still get addicted to coffee and tea. It's not about getting addicted. Look, any, that way you can get addicted to anything, right? Okay, continue. Continue with what you're saying. Uh, you see, they're talking about that, um, but they're looking at only a one very, very narrow aspect, which is like, are they talking about like caffeine and coffee? No, you're something? looking at only one aspect. But even, um, for example, they're talking in a way that that type of matter will disintegrate the chakral web and nothing else, right? Uh, but they had just spoken. So, uh, you know, for example, a person who is um, uh, violent might not be addicted to anything, but they still have holes and cracks in the chakral web. So the way they're describing it is in a way that says that they're just looking at uh, two, since the information is uh, limited, it's just looking at one aspect of, of disintegrating the chakral web, right? Because no, they're actually talking about two. Or two, no, two ways. But they're looking at only a certain types of narcotics, a certain drugs. And in that drug, they've put in even alcohol. So they're not looking at behaviorism. 
uh, breaking down the chakra web. Didn't they describe it earlier? Sitting for development can un injure the web. Yeah. Emotional shock can injure the web. And we mentioned it was Kundalini. Yeah. And then what about the sex is not mentioned? No. Okay. So um, now, look, we'll just combine the two because it says um, when this takes place, all right, um, these constituents, whatever they may be, <laughs> rush out through the chakrams in the direction opposite to that for which they are intended. Yeah. You know, this is very confusing. What is this? I just said so. <laughs> what direction? Astral, it's supposed to go only from the astral out, right? But in this case... It goes how do you know? The they don't mention. They mention. They mention it goes from the physical into the astral, which is not the passage it's supposed to take. So it goes from the physical to the astral. It's not supposed to go that way. And that's why it causes the cracks. Physical I mean, you're astral. calling it... Okay, what's it's, wrong with going physical to astral? Because it's supposed to only come from astral into the physical or etheric. I don't know. That's what they said here. Nature doesn't go in one way. <laughs> no, it does allow know. other things, but if you're talking about things that are not conducive for it. And after doing this repeatedly, look okay. I don't know. So I'll just explain <laughs> what I know. Okay, because how, how do I check this, right? Um, when you sleep, you're supposed to go, right? The soul goes from the physical to the astral. No? No, we're talking about that later. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, so uh, okay, so the thing is, with, um, let's look at uh, certain drugs, right? When we checked, okay, and this is a long time ago, so I might, most, anyway, for say marijuana, not all drugs. So marijuana, you know, uh, certain yogis, they have this ganja or whatever they call it, marijuana, bhang, um, part of their culture and tradition. And the effect on marijuana based on scanning, with Master Chua was inhibiting. It inhibits. So what chakras get inhibited? The ajna get inhibited, the solar plexus get inhibited. Okay. Um, what chakras get big? All right, what chakras get big? Now, where I, if you've done pranic psychotherapy, what ch chakras control your will? The two chakras that control your will are your solar plexus and your ajna. So when you have marijuana, uh, your solar plexus ajna becomes small. The tendency is what you start to do, you don't have the willpower to stop. So if you start laughing, <laughs> you keep laughing. If you start eating, you keep on eating, right? I have no idea. Yeah, baked. Baked? No, nothing. Oh, okay. Um, Netherlands. <laughs> no, not that. It's called being... Anyway, so... Um, so... So whatever you start to do, you can't stop, right? Why? Because your two will center are on vacation, right? So what becomes big? And that's why uh, lately they've been having marijuana for uh, cancer and, uh, you know, pain relief because these are also your processing centers, the clearing house and the one that controls. So when they go on holiday to a certain your pain receptors, they get minimized to a certain extent, all right? And now you know that the astral connects to the nervous system also. Okay, but, uh, but what becomes big? The forehead becomes big, the throat becomes big, uh, the heart becomes big, all right? The heart becomes big. So because of that, uh, they have certain uh, nice experiences and very loving and nice stuff, all right? But um, the, people say if you have marijuana, you'll go to heart drugs. According to Master Chua, when we, when we were discussing it, he says not really because the effect is more inhibiting, but in the long term, if you have marijuana, for example, um, I don't think there's holes and cracks, but since the solar plexus and ajna, if it's uh, small for a long period of time, you lose your motivation. You see, the solar plexus is your driving center, is the center for courage, willpower. Your, you know, it's the center for your, you know, what do you call it? Your self-esteem to a certain extent, right? And then the ajna. If both are on holiday. You don't care. That's why in the 70s movement, you know, uh, the hippie movement with people, so the people are worried, no. relax, man. Don't worry, it's all good, be cool, man. So there's nothing wrong with it, but because of that, you know, you lose your motivation. You lose your motivation to earn money. You lose your motivation to do many things. Yeah, determination, drive. And uh, that's why you become demotivated or unmotivated. That's why they call them stone, because they're literally like a stone. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do anything, right? Okay, so now, 
what about hard drugs? So not all drugs, but what about hard drugs? Hard drugs, um, uh, I'm not sure, based on Master Cho's input, he had the experience only once, not hard drugs, but he was in Peru, and this was just one experience, so he, he said he could be mistaken, that um, the effect of um, high altitude on the chakras is that the chakras start to shut down, okay? And because the chakras shut, shut down, if you energize, it doesn't take it in because the chakras are too small to absorb the energy, right? So the, in Peru, they chew on this leaf called coca, coca leaf, okay? Um, so when you chew on this coca, it has, it's like a diuretic. So it has an activating effect on the ming -min and on the basic. So what happens is the flow of prana in the body is increased. So the chakras start to normalize, right? So they keep chewing this coca leaf. It's not that, nothing to do with cocoa, yeah? No, <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> All right, but uh, now is coca addictive? Uh, uh, no, if you chew a leaf or two, it's part of the culture. You don't, as far as I know, you don't get addicted. But to make a few grams or ounces of cocaine, you need, I don't know, a lot, maybe tons or hundreds of kilos of coca leaves. All right, just to produce some cocaine. Now, if one or two or three coca leaf, I don't know how much it was eaten, would produce that effect on the body. It's like master healing technique for those of you who've done advanced pranic healing. It surges energy through your body. If that is done for just few leaves, can you imagine concentrated dosage of hundreds of kilo, hundreds of kilos of that leaf, what that would do to your body? So that what would happen is there's a tremendous surge of, of energy in your body. And that's why people who have cocaine and some other drugs, they feel like Superman, you know, they do push-ups, they do pull-ups, they start partying, they go out for three days, they don't feel sleep, and then they crash, right? So that is, um, so that is the uh, effect of uh, cocaine on the chakras. So the, now when they say it's the wrong direction, I'm presuming that there's too much energy flowing through the body in general, too much energy flowing. Talk about ginseng. Uh, <laughs> are asking why does it shut down in height? I have no idea and I could be wrong because uh, I just copying what Master Chua said I've not gone on a uh, high altitude to be honest right and Master he said his experience was only one time so that's just based on one experiment you see to make a conclusion you need to uh, Master is very uh, Master Chua is always very proper to for him to make a conclusion you need to have many many at least three four five experiments different places so he wants to go altitude in peru altitude maybe in africa altitude in india and then see if the effect on the chakra is same and then only he will tell you this is the truth otherwise he will just say as far as i know i might be mistaken okay um now why are we talking about this so so this this energy starts to surge in your body and so much energy surges to start to rupture these protective webs because it's not able to withstand the pressure of prana that comes through. So it's literally moving in an abnormal fashion or in a direction it's not meant to be moving in. Okay. Now maybe they correlate the Ming Min as the alchemical center and the heart as the uh, emotional center. So maybe from the physical to the astral, it's the energy is moving like that. I don't know how the clairvoyants see that because that is the three centers, right? So, uh, but that is the effect. Now, when you're looking at coffee, coffee is also a diuretic. So coffee has orange prana. So when you, um, when you, um, by the way, so if you are advanced pranikilo psychotherapist, if you have a person who's a, a cocaine user or one of those amphetamines type user, you can actually simulate the effect of the drug. So they have uh, what they call uh, less withdrawal symptom, provided they follow by just doing mass healing technique. Provi provided they follow, uh, but provided they tick mark all the rules. You know, they don't have hypertension. They don't. Uh, they have, don't have kidney problems. Taking precautions. Everything. So now, coming to coffee, why they would say this, coffee is a diuretic, okay? Uh, like coca, all right? Now, coffee, it's basically orange prana. It affects the kidneys, it affects the navel, okay? And it affects uh, certain organs. So since it affects the kidneys, it affects the ming -min chakra, okay? So coffee, uh, from the ming -min, the energy goes to the navel. And you know what orange does to the navel, right? It expels. So if you have your morning coffee, you might find yourself going to the bathroom after some time if you have not gone already or maybe again. Uh, on another level, since, it's, uh, since, it's, um, um, since it affects the ming -min, it has a activating, it has a diuretic effect on the kidneys. So it activates the kidneys, which activates the ming -min, which increases the flow of energy in your body. So you feel strong. Okay. Now, 
what they're what they're probably trying to say is if you do this too often for too long a time it will start to affect the body and it'll start to rupture the protective web and what about tea i have not experimented with tea you don't really it depends what kind of tea black tea green tea white tea you have to depend Can't. on what those guys have right? we have no idea so but coffee is just coffee, right? You have different beans, but they just got the same property. But tea does not have the same property. That much I know. Uh, different teas have different chakral um, uh, effects. So more than that is yeah, they classified They say that there is a bit of caffeine in tea. It's yeah, there is. Caffeine. But there are some teas without any caffeine also. Yeah. So uh, it's the caffeine that probably... We have to assume it's, it's one. Maybe it's, the, one. maybe it's a certain matter that they have that maybe it's caffeine or nicotine. Maybe that's the certain matter that Correct. has that's that type I of prana. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. You want me to show the PowerPoint or just do that later? Whatever you want, because then you have to talk the two ways. I suppose. Oh, you can talk about two ways, then I'll show the PowerPoint. Finished, okay. I have to do finished? Only that paragraph, then I have to go to the second type. Okay, so the two ways, basically, they're saying uh, the first type. Now, what is the constituent of the... Yeah, uh, Patrick and Astro. Type, what is the type of person? Are they talking about rays? Are they talking about sex type of like male and female? Are gender. they talking about like gender? Uh, you're not supposed to say sex anymore, no? Only gender. You're not supposed to say gender also. Continue. Anyway. Uh, so basically, <laughs> what type of person, what, I, I don't know what type means. I'm trying to figure it out. I was thinking about it for some time, but nothing came to me. It's, I don't find it very important to know anyway. So, uh, type of point of concern and the proportion of the constituents in the first type rush of volatilizing matter actually burns away the web. This would probably be in the effect of cocaine. This would probably be on the effect of cocaine. Maybe certain type of person, maybe old person, young person and uh, a child. Are they types of people? It could be, but we... Older person, obviously, <laughs> he has cocaine is going to affect them much more than a person who's 25 or 18, right? For those of you who have uh, been going out um, um, uh, regularly in the night, Friday night, Saturday night partying, um, you know uh, the effect uh, of recovery time that your body has when you are 18 to 20 and when you're 30 to 35 and then when you're 40 to 45. You know, you can have a lot of alcohol at the age of 18 uh, and, and then go to stand. go to college the next day. If you try <laughs> to do that at 45, um, you will uh, <laughs> not be able to go to do anything much, right? So it looked like a truck run over you, <laughs> right? So so a few of my colleagues and not colleagues but friends from Dubai and certain areas, uh, they would tell. You know, their heart is willing, but their body is no, no longer willing. So they're not able to do what they used to at the age of, you know, uh, 18 to 25 compared to 35 to 45, 40 to 50. So between college and university, let's go to that way. Yeah. Okay. So, so probably shall that I continue? Be and you, you didn't use no. for Okay. All right. So we were talking about the two types. So one is the type of person and the other one is the, the condition of their uh, substance in the etheric and the astral body. Now they're saying in the first type, that's a type of person. It, it is in that condition that the entire web can burn, right? Which means it could burn or it could tear or it could have holes and cracks as we would talk about in pranic psychotherapy. However, it says in the second type, uh, that is where the constituents are volatile. Uh, it, it tends to then make the atoms, right? The, remember, we were talking about the atoms that move through that uh, into the web as well and make it like uh, woven. They say that tends to harden, right? Uh, constituent harden uh, the atoms. Uh, that means the, the pulsation of the web starts to get affected as well and uh, the special form of prana which usually welds it yes the interwoven thing uh, into the web that kind of gets affected as well the web then becomes ossified which is uh, which is more like bone tissue which means it hardens and uh, so instead of too much energy coming from one plane to the other very little is then moving through back and forth 
Now, um, I'm not too sure about this condition. Uh, as a healer, I've never seen a hardened uh, web. So I'm really not too sure. And plus, Master Joe hasn't mentioned about it. So all I know is um, the texture of the web, which is interwoven, right? It is interwoven like this. And it, it is uh, very soft. And they say that when there's an attack of, say, a narcotic drug or a person with alcohol, uh, this web, so if you do this to your hand, right, it's very loose. Yeah, that's how the web usually is. But as soon as it feels that something is going to attack it, right, from the physical and the etheric level, this hardens. And so when it hardens, it becomes more difficult for whatever is out there to penetrate and go further. Otherwise, it's, it's just there. You know, it's like your mosquito net, just a net there to protect. But when it's uh, under attack, from what I understand, is when it tends to harden, right? So moving on. So we have these two types, and then it continues with this. They say the two types are easily, according to them, uh, recognizable. In the former case, we have instances of delirium uh, tremens, which is basically the withdrawal symptoms, for example, that alcoholics have, right? So they have that, they have obsession and certain forms of insanity. So the first type, remember we're talking the type of people where the web kind of burns off. They're saying usually they tend to have obsessions, this kind of withdrawal symptoms and insanity. However, interestingly, they say in the latter case, uh, they say that by far most, most common, uh, according to them in those days, this is more common than the first type, is we notice... That's a bullet, right? Okay. We notice a general dead... Dead, deadening of the higher feelings and the qualities, which means uh, that the higher vibrations or the, the chakras, the upper chakras are not in control of the lower chakras. The lower chakras are in control of that person. The need, the want, the desire is so strong, whether it's re with reference to possessions of things, or whether it's reference to sex and the, the people that they want in their lives, whether it's food, whether it's emotions, it's, it's usually in the lower vibration or the lower energies. And then it says this results in materialism, which is with reference to our basic chakra, brutality, which is also the basic chakra, animalism, which can be basic and sex chakra, uh, sometimes even with food, and then loss of self-control. And so the body then is in control of what it requires and then you just cater to what the body wants. Yes, uh, more food, um, more materialistic things in, in the world, sometimes being at the cost of their family and their neighbors, right? And so that's the sad thing about it, that they go to such an extent. Um, now, for me, it's not actually only this category. For example, uh, when someone is um, into an addictive tendency of, say, gambling or, or, or drinking, they might even take the, the money in the house, the salary that's given, purely to get this. Right. So I remember um, some time ago, we used to provide before Congress came up with this whole process of providing grains to all rural areas. Uh, the MCK Food for the Hungry Foundation in Karnataka, we were actually providing dry ration in different places. And I think this was either in Chamraj Pet or Chamraj Nagar, I can't remember now. And we had volunteers, uh, uh, Arhatik Yogis, who went there to, to distribute this food. And so we were giving them uh, rice, uh, a little bit of dal and some sugar. And so we were giving it purely to people and we were able to actually identify these families where there were elderly people left at home where we didn't, they did not have their family, like their sons, daughters staying with them. And, and you know, they had to fend for themselves. So we thought it would be a nice gesture to try and help these uh, elderly couples. And so the man comes, right? And they have to provide the ration and stuff, ration card and stuff like that. So we know that they legit. And so he takes this bag, goes down the road, straight into the liquor shop, <laughs> gives the rice and the, and the sugar to get money to have his drinks, right? And that's when we realized, wow, you know, people are actually providing this to help them. I mean, it's the money of God knows how many people that we've been able to put into that bag. And for him, it didn't care. All it mattered was for him to go and have that drink. And if it meant taking this free bag of rice and whatever, because it was like about enough to last maybe uh, three weeks or so, he was ready to sell that, even if he had probably a wife at home uh, who was old and who needed food. For him, his drinks were very important. And so it ends here by saying that 
It is well known that those who indulge excessively in narcotics, such as tobacco, will persist in their self-indulgence even at the expense of the pain or discomfort of their neighbors, and I think in many cases even their own family. Their, their finer um, susceptibilities have to that extent been blunted. And so for me, basically the lower nature, the animalistic nature, as they put it earlier, takes over. And we have to have enough strength to be able to overcome them. And so the tendencies that we talk about, these, you know, we feel, oh, we don't have this. But you got to remember that we have these ancient seeds still stuck in us from a different lifetime. You never know. Maybe you were a soldier at some point and you kept drinking just to survive on the boat or whatever it was. So you would go from one place to another. So you never know where our addictions are. And so as we overcome them slowly, right, um, we have greater control over what we want, what we think, what we do. That's the only way we can purify ourselves, right? Uh, but to understand that this is a struggle for them, yes, these people who do go through this uh, difficulty and uh, this type in, in, in Master Joe's course, he combines the whole thing, right? Whether a person is obsessive, whether a person is insane, going crazy, seeing things, uh, wh whether it's visual or auditory, whether it's addiction with reference to drugs or uh, alcohol or gambling or sex, whatever it is, he combines all of it together, making it much easier for us and to help work <coughs> on this web. So I think uh, I like what Amit said last time. He says, great to know all this information. Great to know that, okay, all this is going to happen to these people. It's going to burn off or it's going to uh, get calcified. But then how do we help them? That's not given in these books. And so that's why for me, it's good to understand this, but uh, that's why I mentioned even in the prayer, come back to the foundation that most of us have, is, which is with pranic healing and truly appreciate what Master Joe has given. Made it much simpler than this and at the same time given us solutions how to help these people. Yeah, so I'll end with that and I'll give it to Amit before I go to the next part for ordinary people. So, second type it hardens. Okay, that's great. <laughs> You know, I thought I had uh, had an epiphany and I said, oh, maybe the first one is, uh, you know, based on what was uh, explained, maybe the first one is um, uh, on elementals, you know, and the second one is thought forms, you know. Um, that's why hardening, you know, if a person is depressed, feeling upset, it might harden the chuckle web. But that also creates holes, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> so... Um, but uh, things like depression, they do harden the chakra web. It requires a tremendous amount of energy. That's why it takes time to heal depression. Um, even it, it's more calcification because it's a calcification of thought forms okay. that start to uh, you know collect on the web, right? And layers of layers uh, accumulate. So okay, that makes sense. So that. That is something, anyway. Uh, just disintegrated, whatever, who cares? This is things that... Uh, <laughs> That's how Master thought us, but yeah, so. <laughs> just to understand what's written here. The web does becomes ossified, okay. So the two types are ready to well, The former case, we have instead of delirium, tremens. So that basically withdrawal symptoms to a certain extent, obsession, certain forms of insanity. Now, from my point of view, that's a sign of elemental possession. Elemental possession. Um, we, 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 you know, because Master Chua, he loved this joke and only he would be laughing. He's like, when I used to go to the mental institute, not for higher learning. <laughs> he'd be laughing already. He'd be then. laughing. <laughs> <laughs> not for the higher learning, but to see people who are AB normal. You know what AB normal is? Yeah. Abnormal. <laughs> Anyway, to that's find his that, joke. That's his funny joke. Thank you, Master. Thank you. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> AB normal. <laughs> to see people who are AB normal. So one of his students was a psychiatrist or a psychologist. I don't know. Or both. So he would go there and he would monitor these people. And one of the people, uh, uh, one time, the one of the patients, he would try and scan the effect of the drugs on the chakras certain drugs would inhibit them. So they are basically like, you know, not moving, the agnya is very small, but the elementals are still there. 
So the elementals and certain ones, the elementals have taken over their body, especially the Agnya, the Sola. Can explain what elemental is? So those of you who have done pranic psychotherapy, elementals are, uh, and those of you who are not, um, should I explain elementals? Uh, you know, because in the next chapter, we do talk about elementals, but this is not the elemental he's referring to. That's Definitely not. <laughs> those are next so, ones. So I'm clarifying for those who do not know pranic healing or those who do not. Understand. I thought I explained that, right? In the, in the, there's an ocean full of creatures. Did I explain that, right? No. You can explain it again. The inner world. You know, just like um, you have an ocean, in the ocean there are many creatures. You are, we are living in what we call a psychic ocean filled with creatures and parasites and bugs and cockroaches. Remember you mentioned cockroaches the other day, I mentioned um, something else. Parasites. Now, although the parasites are very small, uh, physical parasites, just like you have physical parasites which can affect you, physical viruses <laughs> that can affect you, but although they're very small, uh, there are elementals that can affect you uh, if they get into you. And this whole atomic web uh, is the one that protects you. Remember, we spoke about this in the beginning of the chapter from all these parasites or from, so it's like your spiritual immune system apart from your um, health rays. So um, when he's talking about these elementals, they are the parasites he's referring to. The negative yes. parasites. You have all sides of elementals. Huh? You have so many elementals. You have good ones. You have uh, Hindu elementals, Buddhist elementals, which are uh, so many types of elementals in the world. Anyway, so we're looking at like, for example, smoking, they attract uh, elementals of, you know, little orange flames. They're from the element of fire. So they at get attracted to smoke. So a person smokes, it, it, it attracts them, right? We spoke about this also with the ants and everything. But um, <clears throat> in the Old Testament, this is known as demons. You see, you have to understand in the old days, the concept of energy didn't exist because they didn't have electrical engineers in those days. So they wanted to coin a term that will... Uh, that would, um, you know, make a person behave. Remember, I showed you the quote by Master Chua, make a per influence a person to behave in a way that he would normally not behave. You know, do things that he would normally not do. And to, to, so to do that, they would just call them demons. So there's a story in the Old Testament where uh, there's a story where Jesus, who's obviously a very, very good healer. Did I give the story? I gave the story already. So, that is one possession. So when Master Chu actually went to this uh, psychic, uh, you know, this, this, this mental institute, um, there was one person, when he saw Master Chua, because Master Chua is a good healer, he started yes, cursing. Jesus went to the next Master Oh, not Jesus, Master Chua, <laughs> the teacher. I think that's what the, I heard. So anyway, right. so when he went to the mental institute, um, the, uh, the person started cursing. He started cursing, shouting, trying to push away because the elementals recognize that, oh, you know, there's a lot of divine energy in this person. So if they do something, we can get disintegrated. So, so that is one. So why are we talking about it? <laughs> I said elemental. What's the difference between elemental in what you're no, referring no, no, no. to? I mentioned it for something. Oh, okay. Sorry. The delicate word. Uh, yeah, the insanity, the insanity. So that's why... I thought that this was uh, to do with possession. So possession is basically, possession is not really basically disincarnate spirits. You know, uh, it's not disincarnate spirits where, um, where a person possesses you. That, as far as Master Chua has seen it in all his field of experience, he has never seen it, right? He has looked a lot, never seen it. Most of the time, they're just elementals. And there are some very old, old ones, ones yeah. right? So from, there are, from a different century yeah. as well. So. And, and, and there are cultural elementals. So they'll Correct. talk in terms of languages and cultures. And, and stuff, religious. In 1984 and 1820. And that stuff, so. Um, so, so basically the first part was insanity. The second part is basically uh, the higher soul not able to control the vehicles. So if you look at what they're describing, materialism, all of this, it has to do with uh, for those of you who are uh, pranic psychotherapists or read the pranic psychotherapy book, it has to do with solar plexus down. So none of the higher chakras are functioning. The person's upper chakras are small. The lower energy centers are big. Okay? The lower energy centers are very big. So the lower will is stronger than the higher will, which is the Agni. Yeah, but the lower will is in control by the animalistic tendencies. All right? So and the self. Self. And the uh, you know, lower self. So basically, you see that the, the chakras have a consciousness of its own. 
okay? The chakras have a consciousness of its own. That's why it can absorb prana, distributed prana. You know, you eat, even the organs have a consciousness of its own. That's why when you eat something, everything gets processed. The, everything gets, you know, you know, the proteins are separated, the fats are sent to the liver, you know, everything is done because the, there's a certain consciousness behind the body. Now, this is the principle behind instructive healing and other uh, types of healing. And, um, but the thing is, for example, the consciousness of the basic is survival. Now, the consciousness of the sex is also survival, but to procreate, right? Now, if it's not under the control of the higher energy centers, this procreation goes up into overdrive, like they would want to procreate all the time so you need something to regulate you know it's like you'd leave your kid alone in a candy store the kid you know will start to eat a lot so you need the higher principle controlling like excuse me just one <laughs> right or once in a while so um, so that is the higher nature controlling the lower nature so this is what it um, describes uh, and I have no idea uh, what would do this to a person actually but the fact that energy follows where intention is focused. So when you're focusing so much, you create monster thought forms of yourself. You imprison yourself in these, what we call desire thought forms. So the first one has to do with elementals, which is an external influence. The second one has to do with desire. You know, the desire to have sex, the desire to earn money, the desire to do this, the desire to do that. The first one has to do with an external influence. You're insane, not because of anything, because most likely you are being possessed by you have elementals that's why in when the jesus story when they went to uh, when jesus saw uh, it said there were legion of demons you know legion there were legions uh, legion is basically another fancy word for many so all the chakras had elementals in it so that is what what the first form so uh, withdrawals and obsession insanity these are elemental uh, tendencies like you want to smoke because the, the elemental is craving for smoke. So you want to smoke. But the second one, they're talking about um, discomfort. Okay, what was the Materialism, brutality, animalism. That has to do with desire. That has to do with desire. Most likely thought form. What do you think? Yeah, I think um, that's close to it. Um, the, the need for certain things. But uh, I feel sometimes even addictions could be part of that. And some addictions also have elementals. Yeah, so that's why for addictions, you need to do two. That's why Master Chua just made it easy. You have to remove the desired thought forms and you have to use the negative elementals. Of course, then you have to purify the body and you have to create the chakra shield and all shields. Yeah. So uh, keeping that in mind, that's basically what uh, we were talking about that would harm them. And so then to talk about people, uh, how do we, as we start to evolve, what happens? So Wait, as, one second yeah. before. You're going to the next Sorry, part, uh, huh? before I also give it back to Amit, when he mentioned the first type, you know, where uh, you're talking about these elementals coming in, the elementals cannot come into you until and unless you're weak. Yes, uh, so which means if you are strong emotionally, mentally, physically, then it's not possible for it to come in. So unless you give it some kind of um, matter for it to survive in you, it cannot stay in you. Right. For example, um, I don't like to drink. So even if you take me to a bar, I can sit there, I get probably bored in 15 minutes, I'll be out. Because there's no similar vibration in me to get attracted to that. Or even if there are elementals in the bar, which is possibly there, it will not get attracted to me because there's nothing in me that kind of, there's no, uh, you know, what they say, like qualities attract. And there's no quality in me or no vibration in me or no energy within me that it can hold on to. Right? And that's why even if you go to certain places where people are taking drugs or smoking or drinking, you may not be happy about it because there's nothing within you that kind of attracts the same. Yeah, go ahead. You want to add? I should just order the starters and overeat the peanuts. Oh, I thought you were going to order some food now. That's why. I ordered Red Bull. <laughs> and everyone got upset because the Red Bull is more expensive than their beer. The beer was 30 rupees and the Red Bull was 200 rupees. Oh, really? <laughs> or 150, I forgot. Anyway. So... Um, all right. Now, uh, that being said, you have to understand this is really groundbreaking stuff. All right. Uh, I, I know some of you have mentioned, by the way, uh, Balachandra, is it possible to rupture the web and experience the astral world? Yes. Like this, you will experience it. <laughs> what you're experiencing is astral, but not very nice astral. More ass than um, Maybe addicted. Tannins in tea does have similar effect of caffeine. Okay, that's also good. But I heard it stress relieves also. You know, it reduces stress. Maybe by expelling the energy. 
You have to understand this was uh, groundbreaking. This book was written in 1925. At that time, to say, uh, as much as I love Master Chua's teaching also, to say that, okay, we can do something about it, but I, I appreciate and I'm awed by, the, by what the author has written and by Bishop Ledbetter because no one that I, as far as I know, was saying these things in 1925. In fact, I don't think the, based on what I understand, I'm not a medical doctor, I don't think the correlation or belief in the correlation of smoking and negative health happened until the 40s, 50s, and until 1964, when the first Surgeon General warning came out on the tobacco uh, thing. I don't think, so you're talking about 30, 40, 50, 60, you're talking about like 40, 50 years ahead of its time. So at that time, somebody reading this, tobacco, bad, rubbish. You know, they would find it extremely hard to comprehend. Here, you're taking it for granted. So you have to think this is mind-boggling mind, uh, stuff. In fact, I was reading in the 1930s, doctors would recommend smoking. All right. I was reading an article. It said that um, if you read 1930s, it says, don't be foolish. Take your doctor's advice. Smoke a fresh cigarette. <laughs> In the 1930s, yeah, this is 1930s. So if you still have an addiction to smoking, <laughs> go back in time. Yeah, smoke. if you go back to 1930s, <laughs> right? So they're correlating. <laughs> okay, so um, so that is that is the whole idea, right? So you have to understand this is fantastic. <laughs> All right. Now, as as you start to work on yourself, even if you have these addictions, which I mentioned earlier and you try to overcome them, you might struggle with it. But as you start to move from the solar plexus into the heart and go higher and higher and higher, which means the energy that you're drawing from above, uh, from your, your atma or from your higher soul, you bring in more and more, which means that energy is now able to take control. The atma is then able to take control of the jivatma, which is very important when you want to spiritually evolve. Yes. And so they say here, as the consciousness of the ordinary man, yes, uh, which we are referring to, um, starts to change, right? Uh, and then he is then able to, which is otherwise not po possible for an ordinary person, to work with this atomic matter, which we are referring to. So the atomic matter, both in the etheric and in the astral world, or the astral body, is something that we are not able to handle. But as you start to evolve, right, you purify yourself of all these weaknesses and limitations uh, with reference to your thoughts. And also the Kundalini has to be awakened to, you know, increase your uh, receiver to that channel range. From the earlier chapter, right? And so what happens is you're evolving, you're purifying yourself, uh, you're trying to work on your thoughts, your words, your actions, uh, your addictions, if you have any, your limitations and weaknesses. And then as more and more divine energy comes in through you, uh, it allows this Kundalini to get awakened. That's what he was referring to. And so this then allows, because of it, yes, uh, as you purify your vehicles, he becomes then, or this person, or this, this, uh, this uh, ordinary man, he starts to become, uh, he has the ability now to then work with atomic matter. Right. And so it says here is able to function in the atomic matter and then is able to carry his consciousness along a direct road, a direct link between the physical and the astral. Right. And so he can move his consciousness back and forth without, in this case, affecting the web. So he can move in and out through his bodies. Yes. His own physical body and his own astral body through the web, which is the way through which he can <clears throat> increase this communication right from one uh, level to another and the the web retains as it says here its position and activity permitting the consciousness to pass from one plane to another however even though it allows this to happen it will not allow other subplane yes uh, the uh, the beings of these lower planes any of the energies from this lower planes to actually come and influence or affect it so, so as you start to change who you are, your consciousness, I, I guess even that quality of energy within your astral and your physical will start to change. And through that, you're going higher and higher. And so you're able now to work with atomic matter, which allows you to then move through that web, yes, back and forth, uh, with, without affecting the, the functioning of the web, the quality of the web, or 
causing any holes or cracks. Now remember, this is also related to what we learned earlier when we're talking about the Kundalini also getting awakened. And so other faculties start to get enhanced. Yes, so your clairvoyant faculty, your clairaudient faculty, because now the web is something that you can, through will, open and close without a problem, without causing holes or tears or going you know, insane or crazy. So when you want to see something, say for example, you're a healer and you want to see your patient's condition, despite your scanning, you can actually open the web, look, yes, and so you're using the communication to look at what that person looks like energetically, including maybe his chakral condition and his organs, physical organs, and then you realize, oh my God, you know, the red there is really not good, so I really need to work on it. And then once you finish looking at what you want, you close it, right? So you can open the shutter and you can close the shutter. Look at will as much as you want in detail, depending on how, how well you're guided. And also with re reference to listening. You know, um, when I was in Australia, I met this young man. He was a carpenter there, I think late 20s or something. And I remember... <gasps> <laughs> And then, yes. And so I remember we were all out in this resort. We were like, I think three women and I think he was there. I don't know who else was there. But the, the thing I remember is it was in the night and he was giving us all these stories um, about his life. And uh, he is someone who's both clairvoyant and clairaudient at that point. Uh, and he was able to actually buy himself a house. And so he bought this house and he goes into the house and he can see ghosts and he can hear them. And he says, it was so noisy, you can't stay in the house, you can't sleep, you can't do anything because they're constantly walking around and talking and doing stuff. And so... Uh, Since you won't get lonely and <laughs> yeah. you can't get coronavirus from there. <laughs> yes, and you have, you have company at No home. need for social distancing. And so he came to Pranic Healing and things like that. And, uh, you know, people said that you've got to remember that uh, ghosts have always stayed there. You are actually the intruder, it's not them. It's been their home, it's been their place much before you. And so he went uh, to the library to find out what actually happened to that piece of property. And um, um, I don't remember exactly how many decades ago, or was it a century ago, that house was partially burnt uh, when there was a party happening, right? And so many of the people actually died in that fire. And so those are the people who are still there. They're still having their party every day over and over and over again. And it, I can't imagine how crazy it must be. You know, one day, two days, one week is okay. And after that, the noise gets to you, I guess. And so he got the pranic healers to come in and they did uh, the great invocation. Uh, they did all the chanting. And as you know, with the great invocation, there's the light that opens up. So with that, many of them left. Yes, except for the couple. And... Uh, and also, after this, uh, his clear audience shut completely. He couldn't hear anymore, which he was very happy for. And so there was only this couple. And this is the couple that actually owned that house. And so the man was never a problem because a man would just take his, uh, his suitcase or whatever it is that he took to work and went out early in the morning, got ready, went out. He comes only in the evening. Problem was with the lady. The lady would just hang around. Yes. <laughs> And so when he's sleeping, she'd come and sit at the edge of the bed. And he was saying, it was so eerie. The only place she wouldn't come to was his meditation room. She will sit outside the door and wait for him. Right? So anyway, that's, that's as far as Claire Wines. He and didn't have audience. enough divine energy in his aura. <laughs> well, that's where the story ended with us. This was at three o'clock in the morning. That's why I remember it so well. <laughs> it's like, yes, this is the story we all have to hear <laughs> in, in Australia at that point. Anyway. So just to let you know that, you know, these faculties do open up for people. And so in this case, it did open up uh, for this gentleman. So coming back. And so the ability for you to then pass through this atomic matter, allow communication to happen, happens very easily at this point. Uh, just to add a few more sentences before I hand it over to Amit. Uh, sorry, I don't have time. I know, I know. You took all the time. Oh, for once only, Amit. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, fine. Uh, so from one plane to another, uh, while the same time fulfilling its purpose of preventing close contact with those lower subplanes uh, from which many kinds of undesirable influences, we're talking about elementals and uh, other creatures that exist in that might come through, right? And so to end, they say, please don't try to rush this. Yes. They say, uh, the only safe way for this to happen to you is for it to happen naturally and gradually. Right. And so it goes on to say, um, 
just wait for these to unfold and they will unfold in the normal course of evolution. This is the best way for you to avoid any kind of dangers or difficulties, <coughs> right? The point that they're using the word <laughs> unfold is not, um, in my point of view, uh, a mistake because it unfolds, <laughs> it opens. Yeah. Remember, it opens and closes. Um, so, should I talk about it or shall we just uh, go next time? And I'll How long will you take? A while. Like Maybe 20 minutes? minutes? No, no, no. Five, ten, ten. Okay, so would you want to take no, five? No, no, no. It's time. We'll take the questions. There are lots. Okay, so you take all the questions. Huh? No. Go ahead. Anyway, let me finish this because I haven't shown the presentation. I'll go through the presentation in the first 10 minutes of the next, uh, uh, next session so that we're fresh. Uh, as the consciousness of the ordinary man, because this must show us quotes and all, I don't want to rush it. Rush it. So either physical or actual, there are normally no possibility of conscious communication as how he purifies his vehicles. He's able to maintain the function. There's something that came to me, but I didn't anyway. Inactivity permitting the consciousness to pass from one plane to another while at the same time. Okay, let me put it in simple English. Apart from the chakral issues and the um, you know, web getting strong and those kind of things, uh, basically, um, your brain cells are only used to, forget the chakras, okay? Because then you'll think of physical astral. Your brain cells are only used to uh, seeing a visible spectrum of light, certain spectrum of light, all right? Um, they're used to registering visible colors, like purple and red and orange, visible, right? Uh, they have not been trained or evolved enough to be able to register uh, subtle light, subtle colors, and higher colors. Look, I'm giving this in Master Chua's words, type of simple English, instead of using the word astral and this and that, that might be more impressive, but I think this is making it more easier to understand, all right? So, because the colors that people clairvoyants see, okay, uh, are not in the visible light range. Right? They're in the astral light range, they're in the higher light range. Is that okay? So that's basically that. So one of the techniques in higher clairvoyance, for example, is your thought of certain meditation that makes you increases the, uh, which trains the brain cells to be able to uh, uh, measure and monitor those colors. As simple as that. Now, why should you uh, be prepared before? Because if you can see astral matter, you can see all of it. And there's not only uh, good, right? There are other stuff. Most of the time, not so good. Especially if you meet people, <laughs> you sense the astral energy. Even now, as you meditate, you sense, you feel uh, a little uncomfortable. Now imagine if you saw it and you're not trained. You're not practicing uh, you know, loving kindness. You're not, uh, your aura is not strong enough. We'll talk about it in the next session. But these things you need to make sure before, and this happens naturally. So your body has inbuilt fuses to make sure that you are protected. That's why, uh, that's why when you use will, it doesn't open up, right? That's why it, when you use will, it, it, it won't open up. And um, so we're not in a hurry to do it. There was something else. What's that? The only safe way, it's not the only way, but there are many ways. But, uh, for, but this is one of the good ways to wait, wait for it to unfold. But of course, you have certain catalysts that help it unfold quicker. Otherwise, there is no evolution, right? You evolve, there's no spirituality or, you know, the whole point is to do it faster, right? Obviously, it will happen. <laughs> right? So, you know, you can walk to a place, you can drive to a place, you can fly to a place, right? Uh, so, there are different ways to make it happen. It also right? depends on the distance. Yeah. So, um, apart from what I want to talk about in the near term, Maybe for next class. Maybe maybe. It'll come to it's all, it's already said. Okay. Yeah. Um. So the question was, uh, don't thought forms also attract the same elementals, the same type of elementals? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about it next time. It's in the PowerPoint. Yeah. So keep your question, Ujwala. From the eight limbs of yoga, from yamas and niyamas, 
Um, <laughs> one of the point in Niyama's, uh, it says, uh, socha, cleanliness, cleanliness in physical, mind, and mental. Why is it, why is said mind and mental? <laughs> This has nothing to do with the astral web, but of course, you can answer. <laughs> tempting to answer. Maybe next time. It's good, you know. It's part of study. At least it's something. Uh, we'll talk about it next time. Yeah. I will write it down. Yeah. Socha. Yeah. Rahul, Socha. just remember that question and come back with it. Uh, it's we'll a good question. Uh, but I, there is a difference between that. mental and and mind. So clairvoyants, don't worry about it. It's just your eyes. To make it easy, your eyes can only see certain light. If you want to see, uh, if you right now you can feel certain energy with your hand when you're scanning, you'll be able to see the energy. Then you'll be able to see etheric prana and etheric matter, etheric chakras. And then if you can see higher than that, your brain gets more trained. Then you can see astral, so you can see people's emotions. You can experience people's emotions for free. I don't know whether you want to do that. Yeah, that's true. Um, <laughs> Not my cup of tea. Very, very irritating, especially on planes. Uh, you know, the person next to you and the person behind, you can sense what they're thinking about with the flight attendant. You get all visuals. <laughs> uh, okay, let's so, move on. And then, um, and then uh, you have mental. So once you can see mental, you can see people's mental body and you can see their mental matter and all sorts of stuff. And then, of course, higher the causal and spiritual. So you can see actually the incarnated soul of people, how big it is, how strong it is. It's just a science. It's no big deal. What else? Um, fresh, fresh cigarettes is BD. Uh, yes. I have no idea. This is literally uh, the ad. You can Google it. Why don't you Google it and check? Uh, made of tendo leaves. I don't know if it's, you know. Also, if will is low, would that make them more susceptible to other thought forms and also in the vicinity? Uh, yeah, if, uh, if the energy is low, not necessarily will. You see, once the energy reduces in the body, everything starts to reduce, right? So Correct. And even when energy reduces, even your immune system gets affected. And that's why if your energy is low and you go even to a hospital, it's not conducive. And, and so even with corona, we say, let's not allow kids and the elderly to go out, right? Not because they're, they're coughing, and they, but the immune system and the amount of energy that they have is not healthy enough to get them to combat the virus, for example. So happy ghost, party ghost, ghost going to the office. Can you explain this with an example? I have no idea what uh, I didn't see. One of the things that uh, I think, uh, I don't know who mentioned this to me, but uh, for the, the ghost who are still stuck, right? Remember, we've, we've spoken about this in other books. Uh, for them, life is exactly they, as it was when they were physical, right? And since they are in the astral world, in the astral world, you can create anything you want. So even if they've broken down this house and they build like a five-story house or a five-story building, I can still create the house as it was when I was alive, right? And so the person will still continue even though the house is gone. For them, that is still the house even though it got burnt. And so for him, his routine is you wake up, you do this, you go and you come back and then probably there's a party in the evening. And so she does the same thing over and over again. And so they relive their life over and over and over again Till they sooner or later start to realize that a lot of their so-called friends who are around are no longer there. And after a hundred years, it becomes very lonely. And then they say, you know, we do want to find a way to go back home. And uh, one of the ways is uh, by using the great invocation. And that is chanting three ohms, uh, saying the great invocation three times and then three ohms. But prior to that, you start with an invocation. Why do you want to do this? Right. So invoke to God, ask for the help of, which is the archangel? Mikhail. Mikhail to help you. Mikhail. Yes. And uh, you you ask for the healing ministers, whoever else you would like to invoke to or other beings that you know from your own religion. Ask for their help to help these uh, these beings to then move to the next, yeah, uh, take the next step forward. And then you do the great invocation, the three ohms of the great invocation and the light opens up. And so through that light, they can, they can, enter into the next realm that they're supposed to go to. So that's one way of helping. I'm sure there are other ways, but this is the great invocation way. Yeah, end with three ohms and then say a thanksgiving prayer. Yeah, invocation, three ohms, uh, three great invocations, three ohms again, and then end with a thanksgiving prayer. My advice, don't do that. My personal advice, because... And don't do it alone, yeah? No, uh, remember it, may, it was... But 
in, in at least in Australia, when they spoke about it, they had done it in a group, a, a huge group, uh, I think 12 or more people. Sorry, go ahead with what you know. Uh, it's a long discussion. I'm not getting into it, but it's a full-time job. You see... Um, no, but if it's in your home and you need to help, yeah. uh, that's because what we're The way about. you explain it is don't do it as a healing or a service. Uh, Correct, yeah. It's your call. I, uh, agree. I can that's give you certain examples. Job. It's a full time job. Yeah, that's what Master Chow Your healers is. can't bug you in the night and stuff like that. They can your only your message patience, you. Not your, healers. Ah, your patience. Your patience. <laughs> you can put your phone on silent, but these guys will start to bug you. Yeah, especially if they know you, you, you have given someone so, an exit then they might uh, come back to you. Others might come back to you. So because Master Chua has had that thing. Yeah, he so has. He helped one and there was a whole sea of people outside. He just left. He's like, no, I'm not getting involved. It's not my mission. So, um, by the way, what you can do is, uh, what, it's interesting experiment, is you can put naphthalene balls. You know, in India, they have these naphthalene balls. Uh, if you sense uh, presence, you can experiment with it. Put in four corners of the room. Why? Because naphthalene is something that evaporates. So anything that has to concretize or materialize, it'll have difficulty in materializing because naphthalene is evaporating or dematerializing in nature. Okay. Um, so you remember all your grandmother's cupboards, right? So it would not be a good idea to put your kriya shaktis or with naphthalene balls <laughs> if you have them in your cupboard. Okay. So. Um, so that is the thing. Any other questions? There was someone questions. Yeah, well, every time Amit has his grandmother home and her things come out, he's like, "Oh, I can smell the naphthalene balls." The chocolates used to smell of that. Seriously, <laughs> that sari. <But> that... <laughs> what? Yeah, that's why for me the can grandmother story here. Uh, ghosts are afraid of divine energy. They're not afraid. I don't. Know. You see, the gross. You have this uh, concept in the inner world called like attracts like. Remember, I explained this. So ghosts, their vibrations are uh, much lower. Divine energy vibrates at a very, 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 very high frequency. So they don't, they don't, um, they're not compatible, right? So that's why it tends to repel or extract. Can clairvoyance see under light or darkness or is it the same matter? I cannot answer this question, but the darker the better. I used to joke, you know, does that mean if you're a really good clairvoyant, you don't need, uh, you know, you'll have night vision, so you close your eyes and, you know, you can just see the auras of people like, you know, the Predator movie. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think so, I'm just joking. Okay, yeah. why do some just suttas a joke actually... being recorded. So. Okay. so, with reference to rishis and others, uh, how come they need to smoke and, you know, sniff? Uh, so, Master Joe had actually met with this uh, yogi in India, and the, he wanted to take something for, the, for that person, and... Uh, they said the only thing he likes is cigars or cigarettes. I can't remember which one. And so Master actually bought a packet and gave it. And then, you know, they said, Master, why would you want to give something like that? You know, we talk about it not being healthy, blah, blah, blah. He says, no, you got to understand for these great teachers to survive in a city, it's very, very difficult. And so to numb their senses to an extent, they need to smoke, right? They're not smoking because they're addicted to it. It's for them to be able to survive with people like us because our energy is the energy of our city is not clean on any level. And if they have to stay here for a period of time, and they come usually for a very short period of time, maybe 10 days or so. And in those 10 days, if they have to survive in, in, this, uh, in, in this environment, they have to then make their energies a bit more grosser. Uh, because um, they're used to a very sterile environment in the mountains and the caves, there's no one around. And also their own. So know, there are a lot of stories about energy. it. There were these yogis who got, uh, you know, some Singaporeans wanted to get these yogis from, remember? China. From China, from the Wasai Mountain, Wasai. I don't know. Master Joe said he's Chinese, so he knows how to pronounce it. Wasai. Mountain. I don't anyway. know how to say it. Then. So they got them to Singapore. They said, "Come to my city. It's a very fine city. You have a fine very for this. City. You are fine for that. You are fine for everything." I'm just joking, but it's a nice city. I love it. Uh, but um, yeah, so um, so they put them up in a nice resort and everything. And after two days, mm -hmm. they visited the the the, the, the teacher, the master, and they're like. I cannot breathe here. There's so much stress energy. There's so many thought forms, everything. I'm going back to my mountain. Bye. So only one of them stayed back. And that person could stay by smoking. He would desensitize. You see, smoking and sometimes even drinking 
it, it starts to descend, it starts to desensitize you. That's why some people, when they're very stressed, they start to drink alcohol. It has a numbing effect and uh, to a certain extent uh, desensitizes your astral body. So you that don't feel it, way. but it doesn't remove the, uh, it doesn't remove the elementals and doesn't remove the thought form. So the moment you wake up the next day, the stress is still there. So then they keep drinking and drinking every night. They need their late night peg. Uh, to so they have a good night's sleep because they desensitize from the stress and from the thought forms and the inner noise. Sorry, so, we cannot answer all the questions. Uh, it's already more than ten minutes. Up. So that is one reason of the tobacco. Uh, so the rules of the teachers don't up reply to the rules of the student uh, because they have and don't bathe for many years. There are many many stories. Uh, they're fun, but we don't have time to go into it. How okay, with reference to camphor, I I'm not yes, sure. Yes, camphor is the same. That's why I think you use it also for spiritual to, purpose to maybe to remove cleanse, or ward yeah. off sp spirits. Um, uh, I'm not too sure if you keep, actually keep it in cupboards. I, I don't know anybody who keeps it in cupboards. So. It's highly flammable, right? Yeah, it's a flammable good idea. How do okay. you know we are progressing in the spiritual part? We should take the questions later. How do you later? know we are progressing in the spiritual part? You know by the way you think and the way you feel and the way you, uh, you view the world. That's one very important way of knowing you're progressing. You'll uh -huh. see yourself changing. You will notice the change. And, and it's not How just small changes. World? And if you don't notice it, people will notice. And they'll come and tell you, you know, we, we can see this change in you. Or that's happened to you. Especially people who have not met you for a year or two. They're the ones who will notice more. All right. So we'll, uh, sorry for the others who we, uh, we haven't, if we weren't able to answer all your questions. Please yeah, so uh, keep them. Yeah. Because uh, the latter part, we've more or less taken care of. But the initial part, I think. Well, I look through them. Yeah. Yeah. If so. there is still anything that is left out, please bring it uh, for the session day after. Yep. We'll continue with webs and we'll move on to birth and then hopefully end with death. Because <laughs> of the two chapters coming up. All right. Let's close our eyes, connect unto the palate, to the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, to our beloved and respected teacher, Grand Master Chok of Sulad Maha Guruji Nele, to all the great teachers and masters of theosophy, the angels and beings of knowledge, light, and power. To our soul and divine self, we thank you all for your great, great blessings, for your tremendous light and knowledge and wisdom, for your tremendous patience with us. We ask you to continue to help us to absorb and assimilate all the knowledge, all the priceless teachings, and to use it to become better instruments in your service. With thanks and in full faith, so be it. You slowly open your eyes with a smile. Atma Namaste, everybody. Okay. Enjoy your evening. Enjoy your time with your family. And we'll see you on Wednesday. Raised hands. Uh, ah, okay, Bhagya, you may. Okay, Bhagya. Can we have your email ID? Because when we are in session, there are much more clarity. But when we read afterwards, then we face so many queries and we are, there are so many questions come up. Just ask me in the session. See, this is not like a time limit session. We have to like, you know, uh, finish the book within this amount of time. Let's learn it properly. Okay. If you have questions, that's good. Just put it up there. Just put it up there. Even no if it's over and over so, again. Uh, we don't mind responding to email, but here, if you put it up, everyone benefits. So yeah, yeah, definitely. Maybe you thought of something that they thought of, but they forgot. And then, or maybe they also didn't think of it. And then, you know, you help them understand more. So. Uh, so that would be a thing right and with me honestly okay. sometimes with emails uh i start looking at the most urgent one and yours might go down because there's like already 50 emails Understood. <laughs> and i don't want to miss it and i think it won't be right so if you're advanced, if you're for, we can put these uh, questions in next next session yes in the course. beginning please bring it please bring it and keep it anyways most of you especially you come early enough just place it there yes. so we take care okay yeah okay thank you so we much but thank you yeah Thank you. Bye, Gabriel. How does it? Bye, bye. Happen? Good night. Good night. Okay, that one maybe we can reply in later. Who's that? Sonia. Uh, Sonia. Sonia, if you could just bring your question back next week. Although yeah? it's not part of the book, it's a study session. But yeah, sure. Let's see. We already right. have Socha. Socha, yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you, everybody. Good night. Enjoy your meal. Bye. <laughs>